Good afternoon, boys and girls, and welcome to episode 144 of Love at First Scent with me, Persilays, coming to you live from YouTube. And I'm just going to do the usual thing and go onto the tablet and make sure that the episode is coming through loud and clear, which it appears to be. Apologies for a um, slightly croaky throat today, and also apologies for the crazy hair, which I'm kind of trying to tidy as we go along and it is just not working, so I think I need to embrace the craziness. Okay, if you're watching uh, live today, thank you very much for sticking around. We've just done uh, one video on the new releases from Perfumer H from Lynn Harris's brand. Uh, when I get a minute, I will add the links to all of the videos that we're doing today in the video description, in the, uh, the, in the video description below. Um, and I've completely lost my train of thought, but I was going to do the usual thing to say, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so. The video that I suspect, or the perfume that I suspect a lot of you are waiting for, is the one that we're going to do live after this one. So, um, needed to mention this. Who gets the first comment? It's Yura saying, hello again, lovely to be back. This has brightened up what has been quite a depressing day. Oh, well, I'm sorry to hear that, but also glad that um, somebody somebody send something that will cheer Yura up. Audrey says, couldn't agree more, Yura. This is the first time I've managed to catch a live. What a fantastic community. Thank you for, for saying that. I just feel... Um, so 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 privileged and so blessed to, to, to have this interaction and these conversations with all of you i know i've said it before and i'm sure people think that i'm just making it up and and saying it to be to be polite or to be nice but i really really always learn so much more from you than than than, than you learn from me and it's fantastic going through the comments afterwards and seeing how you all interact with each other and just how how much you know how knowledgeable you are i just feel i could fire off a question and an answer would come back on some obscure perfume matter within a, within a matter of moments. Uh, Angela's saying hello, um, and Samantha's saying, same, my first live session. The, the lives are fun, aren't they? Because you get to interact with people. Renault says, always curious about Persilaise's outfit choice. Well, I just kind of thought blue, you know. You'd better stick around for the next video, sir, because um, I've got some questions to ask you. Uh, Nubianette says, great, I woke up just in time. Hello from California. Oh, is it really sunny and warm there? Uh, Thea says, back for more. And Ashfaq says, hello again. And Joanna says, beyond excited, one of my favourite brands and noses. So what are we doing in this episode, in episode 144? Let's get to it really quickly. It is the latest release from Parle-moi de Parfum. Uh, and this one is called... Haute Provence, or Haute Provence 89, I should say, and um, I forget what the numbers mean. I think it's the number of modifications that they had to go through. Le Labo is number of ingredients, isn't it? I think this is number of mods. Now, this is a brand that was set up, uh, some of you will know, a few years ago uh, by uh, the Almarac family, by the legendary, I think we can say legendary, knows Michel Almarac, creator of, amongst many things, the um, Gucci pour homme from the Tom Ford days. I think we probably don't even need to say any more, really. Um, immensely talented nose, you know, really, really fantastic perfumer. And this is a brand that's set up between him and his um, sons, his two sons. And one of the sons, uh, Benjamin Benjamin, uh, actually kindly gave up some of his time a few months ago to be interviewed live on this channel. And it's a brand that I rate. Uh, I love their Papyrus Oud, which is kind of an update on Gucci Pour Homme, and there are several other perfumes in the range that I uh, enjoy. But I think this is the first time we're actually going to give a bit of a thumbs down to a Parlement de Parfum, and I debated doing this video. I have smelt this one before, and I've worn it a couple of times, um, because I thought, well, you know, should we do one where I'm being a bit negative about a release from them? And then in the end, I just kind of thought that in the, in the interests of fairness, um, I have to. Uh, you you may you may disagree. I mean, by all means, check it out. I had high hopes for this one um, because I knew that um, that's the bottle. Um, I knew that it would be a lavender. I, even when I first found out its name, that it was called Haute Provence, I'm just going to spray it as I'm chatting away. Um, I, I guess that it might be be a lavender because um, that is that is the ingredient, I suppose, one of the main ingredients that you associate with um, Provence. And I was very, very, very excited to find out what Almarac would have done with a lavender. Um, but 
Yeah, I, I, I can't help even spraying it on, on, on the, on the blotter now. I can't help but feel a, a, a bit disappointed by. It. Well, I suppose more than a bit disappointed, but I should say why. So, first of all, let it be said that it is streets ahead of most things that you would get from mainstream brands at the moment, most things that you would get if you walked into a department store, assuming there are any department stores open at the moment, wherever you may be. Um, but I think it marks an interesting um, point in this brand because, and this is pure conjecture on my part now, okay, because I don't have an insight into uh, what the brand is planning to release or what their marketing strategy is or what their, you know, three-year plan is or how successful they've been or unsuccessful. But th they had their th their debut collection, which was very strong as, as, as a whole. Uh, they've released a few perfumes since then, which have also generally been very strong, including one real nuclear reactor bomb of something that you know it was the saffron one wasn't it that you just cannot even wash off your skin for days and days but it feels as though maybe some forces in the brand thought hang on perhaps we ought to make something that actually is going to feel quite a bit more commercial quite a bit more accessible and there's nothing wrong with that per se. I mean, obviously brands aren't charities and they are here to, to make a profit at the end of the day. The, the, the bottom line has got to be cash. Um, but I guess that is the point at which my interest diverges from, from, uh, from, from um, the intentions of the brand. Uh, and, and also I would imagine the interest of a lot of you watching. Um, because if you if you weren't that way inclined, you probably wouldn't be watching this channel. Now, I could be wrong. Maybe they don't think that this is particularly um, commercial. Maybe they think that this is actually quite um, independent smelling, uh, independent spirited. Um, but I guess what I was expecting was a really, really powerful, herbaceous um, lavender. And what I'm actually getting is quite a lot of safe muskiness. And when I wore it um, on myself, um, it very, very quickly went into fairly predictable, unsurprising, unengaging territory. And 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 I just shrugged and I thought, well, you know, fair enough. They, they, every band needs to do this kind of thing. And, and I've still got um, lots and lots from them that I enjoy smelling and I enjoy wearing. Um, I guess it had to happen that there was one that I thought might be a bit of a dud. Uh, I'll read the, the, the press material that I've got. It's very, very brief, uh, but I want to look at some comments. Uh, where have we got to? Persilase has awesome style. <laughs> I think you're being very kind. Um, Provence means lavender or maybe flamingos, says Gavin. Potentially. I love the dust bag it comes in. What fab packaging says Audrey. Yes, absolutely. And Flacaness says, yes, you're totally right. The number stands for the number of modifications. Thank you. Um, what else have we got? After your first video on this brand, says Flacaness, I bought the Totally White and I'm absolutely excited about this. Yes, I mean, the, you know, they really, really do have some very strong sense. Um, Angela says, I do sometimes feel like I'm being disruptive in class, but only because I get so excited for the live episodes. <laughs> You're fine. You do realise, I'm sure I've told you this, I am a qualified teacher, so I have the right to give you all a detention if I feel like it. Uh, Joanna says, oh no, thumbs down, not so excited anymore. It had to happen, I guess. Yes, I suppose. You know, it's, it's fine. It's not a problem. And and Yura says, it really is like being back at school. Would you like some homework? Is that what you're saying? Um, Chang says, bonsoir from Paris. Uh, FW says, good evening from Germany. I hope I haven't missed too much. Hi from Tel Aviv, says somebody whose whose handle is in Hebrew. I'm really, really sorry I can't read that. I would love to be able to read Hebrew, actually. That, that I don't know that alphabet at all. I'm not a big fan of Haute Provence, unfortunately, says Chang. No, neither am I. Uh, Gavin says, Provence is the French equivalent of Norfolk when it comes to lavender. For a British person, Norfolk doesn't equate with Haute Parfumerie, though I'm sure it's beautiful. <laughs> Hello from Boston, says Josephine. Hi. Uh, A2Z in one says, I love the fact that there's such abundance of fragrances in the universe and exhausted just the same. Um, I always felt like Cedar, Woodbeck, Cedar Woodpecker and Tomboy Narrowly were more mainstream, says Land of Nothingness. Yes, yeah, potentially, I wouldn't disagree. Um, 
Danby says, no, stop. Critiques are not welcome in the YouTube frat community. Be gone with your honest appraisals. <laughs> Flackerness says, but I don't think that their range isn't wearable. Their um, marshmallow scent, for example, is the essence of Prada Candy Kiss. I would describe their fragrances as absolutely uncomplicated in a good way. Fair enough. Um, took me a year and a half, says Lisbeth, but I finally managed to make it to a live stream. Greetings from Belgium. Thank you very much for tuning in. Audrey says, oh my goodness, what was your subject specialism? You have a way of explaining and simplifying things like a teacher. Well, I hope that's a good thing. Have a guess at what my subject specialism is. I'll give you a clue. Words. Okay. Um, and Angela says, I will try to be good the rest of the day. No, 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 you, you carry on. I always like the naughty kids best anyway. So, um, press material. Yeah. It's, it's just very safe. I mean, there is there is a touch of that herbaceousness that you want um, from the lava. Ashfaq says, what do you teach? My family is for... I won't tell you what I do now, but I, I because I because we don't talk day job here, but I, I told you I'm a qualified teacher. English literature says, the, yes, English was my specialism. Well done. Um, let me just very quickly look at the press release. As I say, it was brief. So, Provence, a region of beauty synonymous with lightness, romance and serenity. I'm afraid to me it's synonymous with cakes and n Nutella donuts, but fine. Uh, new for autumn 2020, Haute Provence pays tribute to it. The splendour of its lavender fields perfectly aligned as far as the eye can see. A plant which by its flower load floods a region and colours it for eternity. It is the most spectacular thing, its timeless simplicity making it an icon around the world. In autumn, Provence takes on a new magic, with softened temperatures and limpid light. The scent of lavender lingers, its mauve soft powderiness, its green raw energy, and its fresh aromatic sharpness. Reassuringly familiar, at once energising, encouraging, comforting and calming, lavender relieves low spirits, cleanses the body and soothes an anxious mind, a tonic for these times. In Haute Provence, lavender is the star, yet melon and watermelon. Maybe, actually, yeah, maybe that's what I'm finding a bit off-putting because it's starting to head into aquatic territory. So that was the intention, I guess, and I'm not so impressed. Yet melon and watermelon bring gleams of sunlight and make it seductive, while a final hint of Narcissus leaves a bewitching trail. Hmm, I think, actually, that, 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 that could be it. Because, of course, now all I can smell is ozonic calony type notes. Let's finish off with a few comments from you. What have I missed? Um, Dennis says, handing in my master's thesis in two days. Wish me luck. Good luck, but you have to tell us. Tell us in the next 30 seconds what's it, what it's on. Um, lots of lots of luck coming from all of you. Good luck from me as well. Good luck from the whole world. But what's it on? What's it on? Uh, Denise says, not a fan of this as well. You are very on point as always. You're very kind. Uh, bonsoir. Um, coming 2021, Parlement de Parfum, Haute Nutella. Oh, can you imagine? But it would have to have a beignet note. It would have to have the, 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 um, the, fried, um, the fried dough note. Come on, Dennis, tell us what the thesis is because I want to finish this broadcast and move on to the next one. Um, what other comments can I read while I'm... Uh, Yura says, I know the struggle. Fine. Dennis, how nurses' education is organised in praxis. Ooh. That sounds like a very useful thing to be doing. Um, so good luck. Good luck. How, how many days did you say? Two days. Two days. You, you will be fine. Education science. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. Good luck. The whole world is wishing you well. Okay. Thanks very much for watching this video. I will sign off now and be back in a couple of minutes for a brand new release from a certain brand called Amouage. But you knew that. See you in a bit. Bye.